welcome to Ray Sensation. I'm your host, Dan. And in this episode, I am going to be taking a look at this book, Masterpieces of Fantasy Art. Join me, won't you? Okay, so here we are. We've got this Toshin, a publisher I've done several um, videos on here on the channel. And this is put together by Diane Hansen, someone who's been involved in many of those self-same books. Um, and... Uh, this is a great book. Uh, uh, what would be even better is if a couple of years ago when it first came out, it was printed in a huge, giant-sized, uh, you know, much, you know, big, giant art book format. And uh, I did not have the money to buy it. And so what will happen with uh, these Toshin books is if you miss out on the the um, big, beautiful looking books, sometimes, not always, but sometimes they will put out a smaller, much less expensive version. And this smaller format, there's pros and cons about that. Uh, it's absolutely, it's like one fifth of the price of that giant <laughs> size one. So that's good. <laughs> What's not so good is the size of the reproductions. I mean, when you're talking about an art book, wow. You know, uh, usually the larger, uh, the better, right? So um, so let's look at this and, and uh, you can try and decide for yourselves whether, uh, whether you wanna go for those wildly overinflated out of print prices People were asking for this online in that giant format or whether you'll be satisfied with this smaller format. And uh, like I said, this is Masterpieces of Fantasy Art. Here is the description of it. Uh, Myth, Muscle, and Sexy Maidens, a survey of fantasy art featuring Julie Bell, Felipe Droulette, Frank Frazetta, H.R. Geeker, the brothers Hildebrandt, Jeffrey Catherine, Jones, um, Rodney Matthews, Moibus, Rowena Morell, uh, Boris Valio, Michael Whelan. I think it's Whelan. Uh, this book combines original paintings, um, sketches, sculptures, calendars, magazines, paperback, book covers, an immense dive into this dynamic, fanciful genre. All right. And one thing it has is, this is one of these fancy little what, is it, what are these called? A leaf, I think they're called, or something. I don't, I don't remember. But you know, it, it covers the pages of the book. Um, usually, it would be a larger book than this. You know, this. I don't know. Maybe the original book had this, and so they just decided to keep going with it. Um, that. Uh, is this a, this looks like N.C. Wyeth. Um, okay, so here's the thing is, uh, I flipped through this for about uh, five or ten minutes. I have not read it, so I'm going to be looking at this with you. Um, I, I immediately see this. Like I said, I think this is N.C. Wyeth. I don't think it's anybody who they listed off as having their own chapter in the book. Um, and this is, uh, that looks like Boris. And of course, it's Frazetta. And uh, you know, if you have a chance, I just reviewed Toshin's huge with it with the Frazetta. I did spring for the super giant, expensive version. If you want to see what this might have looked like in uh, if if I had gotten the large version, that's in the Frazetta thing. Um, and here's the the breakdown. There's a uh, a Boris Valio has a. Uh, does the forward, it says my fantasy life. Then there's an essay fantasy, then, now, and always. Fantasy origins, uh, fantasy or sci-fi. You know, is there a difference? Uh, new world, new wave. Julie Bell, it, well, I won't go through the artists again. And so here's Boris's thing, my fantasy life. Oh yeah, N.C. Wyeth. I thought that looked like his work. So yeah, so that's, uh, like I said, he's not, he doesn't have his own chapter. He must be in the uh, the chapter about the roots of this stuff. 
that's wow. I, I really, that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Um, you know, um, there's another. I, to be honest with you, um, Boris and his, you know, he's doing many of the same things as Frazetta, but I don't like his colors as much. I don't like these romanticized kind of very posed um, positions for the models. Um, to me, that's that's just not what I look for in a fantasy thing. And, and please don't uh, get upset if I say something like that about, you know, if you're a huge Boris fan, it has nothing to do with his talent. It has everything to do with my own personal likes. Um, Boris is just not one of my favorites. I knew he was going to be in this book, but uh, okay, so here we go. Um, you know, uh, this is from the, four, they think it was around 1405, this uh, picture here. The Archangel Michael slays a dragon during a war in heaven by unknown Spanish uh, uh, artists. So, you know, that is fantasy art. That is what, that's the exact same thing that would be in modern day uh, fantasy art. Um, Harry Clark, an Irish member of the 19th century arts and crafts movement. And here he did, um, uh, this is for the Little Sea Maid um, from a book of fairy tales by Han Christian Andersen. Pretty cool. There's more uh, classical paintings. And of course there, Hieronymus, Hieronymus Bosch. Um, very, very cool. I mean, I love these older, I love the monsters and these older paintings and stuff. Um, very cool. Uh, this this famous picture of the dragon, fighting the dragon. Um, Boy, this really could use being produced bigger. It also seems kind of dark. But maybe I'm, you know, the, the fact is that they're pretty careful about trying to get the original, you know, a good original tone for these. So maybe I'm just used to it being lightened up a little bit. I'm not sure. Very cool. Very cool pictures. So it's nice to see these early... Uh, these early versions of fantasy art. There's the uh, William Blake. Uh, uh, this, you know, his his artwork was, you know, I, I had some people uh, who were when uh, the uh, which one is it? Uh, the Red Dragon, the Red Dragon book, uh, came out by the Hannibal Lecter writer, and. Uh, you know the 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 the, uh, the movie has uh, shows Blake's paintings in it. And people were asking about it. That's what I really like know about that. You know Japanese fantasy stuff. And there we're getting up to uh, pulp um, art. Black Destroyer. Uh, that's a great uh, short story. One of the uh, Main influences on the uh, movie Alien. It's a great cover for that. There, this book uh, by Margaret Brundage. Um, <laughs> this has been used so much. It, it, it. But it's such a great picture. Such a great picture. I love that. Is this where there? This might be the essay on what's. What's fantasy and what's sci-fi? I, I don't know. More pulp stuff. So you can see, just imagine how, you know, seeing these so much bigger in that, those giant volumes, how much, how cool that would be. I mean, some of these images come across pretty well and even the small ones are reproduced well enough you can see them, but, um, but gosh, and here's, uh, um, Frazetta stuff that's 
reproduced in huge versions in that other book. Um, you know, I was looking, uh, I, I have an old uh, Virgil Finley book that's really good, but it, it got some damage uh, at one point. And so I was looking to replace it. I was figuring Virgil Finley for a while, there were several good books out um, I see that there's none in print right now. And Virgil Finley was a very important uh, artist for the pulps. Um, it's, he, there's, it's due for another nice book on Finley, people. Come on. Um, more cool stuff. Roy Crinkle. Um, you know, a bunch of these people that you're showing, uh, some of these people like uh, Margaret Brundage, she has a, an entire book on her stuff. But a lot of these people deserve their own book. Um, or their own chapter, at least in a book like this. Oh, uh, Barbara Remington. Oh, it says here, had never read The Lord of the Rings when she was, when she uh, decided to do those covers. That's the artwork that was on the version of The Lord of the Rings um, that I had when I was a kid. Um, when I was a kid and bought this, I, 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 was, I, I was less than 10 years old when I got Lord of the Rings. Um, and, uh, there was so much stuff in it that I, you know, like the, the big epic songs and poems and stuff that he had in it. I, I would just have to skip over them. All those, I just flipped through them because I just couldn't, I couldn't deal with it. And, uh, and, you know, whenever they came to a thing and they'd say like, you know, they were building up to a big battle. And then they'd have some character come and deliver news about what had happened in the battle instead of describing it. <laughs> the Lord of Rings could be a, a bit of a buzzkill if you were a kid like me who was so bloodthirsty and uh, was a, had read so much Tarzan and, and stuff and uh, was used to that fast-paced blood and thunder. Um, Nice Frazetta, some Bernie Wrightson. Val Merrick. Now I guess that this is him, this is Val Merrick, who's an artist I, I enjoy. Um, but, you know, Corbin had done, I guess he didn't want to give Corbin too many covers because he had already done, you know, he, he was doing a series of time travel stories for Erie uh, at the time. And, you know, he's, that tri the woman treed by the triceratops is like really famous. I guess he just didn't want to have too many of in a row of his covers, but boy, a little bit of a missed opportunity, quite frankly. And there's metal Herlant, which became heavy metal over here in the U.S. And again, like with all the uh, Toshin books, uh, the same essays are repeated in several different languages in each chapter, so uh, so that they can do one printing and, and use it around the world, and and therefore they can do these giant artwork books at an affordable price. Well, affordable. I say affordable, but boy. Phew. An outstanding uh, collection of images. Uh, you know, a lot of these I, I, um, I'm not familiar with a bunch of these. No, I, the, the majority of them, yes, I do know, but some of these, like that, what's that from? San, oh, it's that's from 2014. Comic Con exclusive. Uh, I don't recognize that thing. I'm not. I'm not saying it's a great piece that I was like, whoa. But you know, it's it's wild to see stuff. Uh, I'm unfamiliar with in a book like this. Um, Fantasy Art Origins. Alan St. John. Pat 
parish, she must people. Now, Arthur Rackham, I have a nice book from, uh, there's a publisher who does really cheap books, or at least they used to be really cheap. Um, and some of them don't look that great. Uh, but Dover put out a pretty decent, very affordable Arthur Rackham book at one point. I don't know if it's still available or not, but that was a nice book. <laughs> Boy, he seems pretty happy about being able to cut off that guy's head, that giant's head, doesn't he? <laughs> now here's the fantasy or sci-fi. That's a cool one. See, I wish that was bigger. Very cool. Very cool. I, I like I like the look of that monster. Some of these I might have seen once somewhere on the web or something and don't still remember them. You know, a lot of times I see cool looking pictures on the web, but you know, they're here and gone. And that is actually pretty gruesome there with the rib cage and the organs showing through. Wow. <laughs> pretty cool. Very nice. Julie Bell. Now, Julie Bell is kind of the same as Morris to me. Um, you know, uh, the, the whole posing is not as interesting to me as the, 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 the action poses of someone like uh, Frazetta. Not to, you know, these perfectly, I mean, they're lovely pictures, but. That, that looks like a romance cover, the, the pose there. <laughs> I do like that. I mean, there's some nice stuff here. Definitely, I just, uh, you know, the, the the way I'm most familiar with her work is, you know, I used to see her calendars all the time. There's some lovely, lovely textures to the, the different dragon skins. I think his name is pronounced Droulette. And this, of course, you know, I knew him from Heavy Metal Magazine. And uh, he's one of the ones who, you know, there were some people who just, um, I might not have connected with emotionally or, you know, been, but, you know, they, they just blew your mind with the, uh, the artwork. I mean, when he does a, a vista or a, a big building kind of thing, or his odd faces, well, that's really, that's really, that, that's a great colors there. Um, yeah. That's fun. That's a lot of fun. You know what I'm not seeing is any of the big cityscape or big palaces things work which I was just thinking of. Well, this is kind of like it. Uh, you know, this big uh, uh, structure. Um, and see, this would be a nice one to have seen the giant version of. Oh, and here's some. It's wild architecture and a, the huge boat. Yeah, this is the kind of stuff I was talking about. So cool. Yeah, like this, this is gonna 
the scales that he's able to convey. Just great. Wow. And now here's Frazetta, uh, of course, uh, it almost feels like, wow, you know, Frazetta has been, you know, there, there is so much. I, I probably have two dozen books at least, uh, different Frazetta books. If you count all the stuff that I've got since the 70s, you know, I remember those early, I think they were from the 70s, maybe early 80s, but you know, the, he's had a lot of books gathered together. And I, like I said, I was just looking through the, the giant Toshin where these, you know, so much bigger than this and, and looking so good. But, you know, if you don't have that and you're looking at this, I mean, these are just so iconic. All this stuff is just so. Mm. Wow. I'm breezing through this just because, like I said, I've got a bunch of videos already on the channel. And I think most everybody here who's who's bothered to watch this channel probably has most of this stuff reproduced somewhere. Terrific. Just the, the poses, his poses compared to be, like Julie Bell or Boris Valho. Um, I just, I just like his, the way he does it so much better. Yeah, and it might be because of when I was introduced to him. He was the first fantasy painter, really, who I took notice of. And, and you know, it's because of the, the paperback covers and, and the worn covers. Um, here's a, I think his name is pronounced Geeker. Um, uh, there, this is another one where they had a giant uh, art book of his. I don't have that one either. Um, I have one of the smaller versions of smaller books they put out later. Uh, just tremendous stuff. Uh, you know, many of the things that we think of as, as alien aspects of that monster were already showing up in his work before he designed the alien monster and uh, I'm a huge Blondie Debbie Harry fan so seeing uh, her work with him that's pretty cool <laughs> oh, I love that it, it, that actually looks so much more playful than most of his stuff Just to see, uh, be nice. This, this again. I wish I had the giant art book version of this, but or the giant. Uh, So much, so much wild, wild imagery. The Brothers Hildebrandt. Um, you know, I guess I, I guess I like the bleaker stuff. I, you know, is is Frank or is that stuff kind of bleak? I don't know. I prefer the, the darker color palette. I guess is what it is. The Brothers Hildebrandt are okay. I like them. Fine. That's a great dragon. I guess it depends on the art piece. That's a nice, that's a nice one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, 
so Jeff, this is uh, Jeff Jones, who then um, changed her name to uh, Catherine Jones. Um, they, uh, did a lot of great work. I don't, I'm trying to think. I, I, I have some of their work in different places. Um, but gosh, I don't think I have one singular great volume. I wonder if there's something out there that I missed. But look at that. That is great. That dragon, that woman lying on the dragon. Um... The, the stuff that Jones did for the National Lampoon, uh, I mean, I liked the the art, but um, I, that's definitely something I, I don't remember getting the point of. These are some pretty great uh, monster men. So this is here, uh, opposite, The Three Ages of Woman. As with many of his paintings of women, this appears to be his own face. Wow. That, I, uh, wow, that's some great stuff. These are, these are so good. And this Rodney Matthews, um, I, I, I would say that this kind of reminds me of Droulette, um, a bit in the, all the sharp angles and stuff. And the, the not really attempting to be um, realistic at all. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I mostly knew his stuff from, you know, in, in a, any, any of the rock magazines you would get. The, the, the record companies that would hire him, or maybe it was at the the band's behest, they would hire him for to do the covers. They always took a, a lot of ads out. You know, they bothered to get that great artwork. Let's make sure people see it, right? Oh, look at that. That's a nice dragon. That's a private commission but then it was used, somebody licensed it to use on an album cover. I mean, I'm not crazy about that Gandalf figure, but I, I like this stuff. That's great. Moibius, Moibius. Moibius is another guy who a lot of times his stories in heavy metal were kind of like, uh, I don't know what the heck you're talking about. I don't know. Uh, you know, I felt no connection with the, the characters or anything. It was all about the artwork and just stunning, stunning stuff. The Airtight Garage. Look at that. That is insane. That another one that I just if that full page was that giant size, that'd be so terrific. Uh, oh, I love that monster. Just passing through. <laughs> wow. 
See, I think, um, you know, I think I've seen more of this uh, uh, woman's work than I realized. I think I probably thought it was somebody else's work. Um, I don't know that I, I look at some of these and make the connection between all of them. Um, But this does, you know, this is definitely uh, a certain time period. Uh, this would, this was uh, a very popular. I, this, this image is all over the place. Um, okay, so it was for the cover of a 1978 paperback, Unknown Five, a compilation of stories from the 1940s fantasy magazine, Unknown. And that's that's the, definitely the kind of thing I was looking out for to buy at the time, but somehow I missed that. See this, if I saw this art on a paperback cover, I would not have bought it. That's pretty cool. I like that too. This is somebody I don't know much about, so I, I'm trying to read this as I flip through it, and I won't do that right now. This is what I know of, of their artwork is these is these worn things, and they were they did uh, those are great covers, and and this is one of my favorite uh, Robert uh, E Howard Conan stories, Rogues in the House. And it has been, you know, you see tons of pictures for this. Uh, you know, just tons of them. And it's been adapted for a comic book several times. That's a, that's a really cool version of it, though. Really nice. So there's... Uh, Not crazy about that ape, but so yeah, there's there's artwork here by this guy. I did not I'm not familiar with. I'm not familiar with a lot of this stuff. I'm trying to see where it was. Swords Edge. So it was for a paperback. Hmm. This is a private commission, so this wasn't published anywhere. Looks kind of like inspired by Red Sonja. Some more Conan stuff. Yeah, I, this is great. This is, this is the kind of thing I really want to see. Is somebody who I'm not that familiar with who has some really great stuff. Oh. And here's Boris. I absolutely could draw women so... Beautiful. But for me, that you know, like, see that kind of, you know, it's so romanticized. That's not, that's pretty fun. What was that? Uh, I don't know where that's from, what that was done for. Cool. It's funny to see this fantasy setting and then see, have someone have such, what is that? Is that the, uh, 80s hair? And <laughs> see, it's, you know, it looks like one of those comic artists who would take up a, a penthouse magazine. And uh, I don't know, he might have worked with his own models. He might have taken these pictures himself, but you know, it kind of reminds me of those people who use a pinup picture from somewhere and just throw them into their painting. Not that that doesn't take, 
you know, talent or anything. I mean, he's, he's, he's crazy talented. And, and these are fun. Um, this is a lot of fun. It just wasn't my, just wasn't one of my top tier. Wow. And this is another artist who I'm only vaguely familiar with. Oh, a lot of album cover stuff and sci-fi paperbacks. There was a certain point where I wasn't reading much sci-fi or fantasy. Um, I, you know, I kind of stopped for a while. I got kind of burnt out and then didn't follow it. You know, that's what happens with everything, you know, whether it's detective fiction, you know, sci-fi, fantasy, whatever. That's interesting. That's a pretty wild Lord of the Rings. Uh, and that's that. So there I took a very long look through this book. I don't think many of you probably made it all the way through. Uh, many people probably didn't. But if you're hearing me say this, then you did. Uh, I hope you enjoyed looking through that. Again, I hate to keep bringing it up, but... There was a giant, massive version of this, and I would have loved to have had it. Some of this stuff just screams out to have those um, huge pages. Um, am I glad I got this for the price, though? Yeah, I am. I I, uh, I got it on sale. And, you know, it's very a very good bargain price for it. Um, and uh, and there's some art. There's definitely artwork in here I wasn't familiar with. Um, I'll be glad to read some of this bio stuff that's in here. So all in all, good job, Toshin. <laughs>